Bill Clinton's going to be the ethical spokesman for the Democrats, huh? Well, that's fine with me, too. See you, folks. We're out of time. Bye-bye. Sometimes you just got to laugh. <laughs> Look at the New York Times here. Trump family's newest partners, Middle Eastern governments, dated November 20th, 2022. Come on. Is this journalism? Back in the 1990s, Rush Lumbaugh had his television show, and he would do a lot of comedy segments because there is a lot to make fun of regarding the left, the Democratic Party, and especially the news media, which protects and assists the Democratic Party in every election. And I, was, I had the same kind of reaction like Rush Lumbaugh would have to a story when I saw this New York Times piece which came out this month. Trump's family's newest partners, Middle Eastern governments. This is in 2022, and I just started laughing because this brings the Democrat news media full circle on how they went after Trump from 360 degrees. It didn't matter what he did or what he said. They were going to find a way to attack him and say to his voters, you can't support Trump anymore. Look at this. He likes those Muslims. He likes those Arabs. You hillbilly hick Trump voters and your red MAGA hats, says the New York Times. You better stop voting for Trump because he likes Arabs and you're a bunch of racists. So since we know at the New York Times that you're a bunch of racist Trump supporters, you'll be angry when you see Trump doing business with Middle Eastern governments. As Rush would say, how cockeyed the liberal American news media views people who don't vote the way they do. Let's just take a brief review here. You may remember in his final year as president, Donald Trump announced numerous Middle East peace agreements between the state of Israel and their former blood enemies, such as the United Arab Emirates, the nation of Bahrain. The news media was very careful not to cover most of these peace agreements because reality and facts and peace were less important than getting Joe Biden into the White House. And the news media's job was to lie about Donald Trump 24-7 as president. And so you didn't see this coverage. You probably... You probably never saw anything like this on ABC News, CBS News, NBC News, CNN, MSNBC, or on your local newscast, which simply repeated what the national newscast showed you, because the Democrat news media's job was to lie to you and to hide the facts. They didn't want you seeing Trump achieving Middle Eastern peace. And if we go back to the 2016 campaign, this brings us full circle. Here they're, they're emphasizing how Trump is a misogynist. He hates Muslims. He's an Islamophobe. Look at this inside edition here. Uh, doing, doing the work of the Hillary Rodham campaign for her in, 20, in the 2016 election. And this is key. Most of the attacks on a Republican candidate for president these days is, are not made by the Democratic Party, by the DNC, by Democrat PACs, by even the Democrat candidate. No, most of the attacks are made by thousands upon thousands of journalists and news editors whose only job when they get up in the morning is to lie to their readers and viewers and listeners and to tell them the ways they need to vote Democrat. And so you have here, Inside Edition, doing the job of the Democrat candidate for her by saying, oh, Trump wants to ban Muslims. No matter what Donald Trump said or did, they would find a way to turn his genuine concerns for American security into something that they could attack him on. When our lax immigration policies allowed a Pakistani mail order bride to come into California and start shooting up a social services center in San Bernardino, California, candidate Donald Trump criticized this. The news media turned it into an attack on Donald Trump because they had no way of justifying President Obama's immigration policies. When the Pulse nightclub shooting happened where a Muslim armed security guard 
murdered over 50 people in Orlando, Florida, under the administration of President Obama, Donald Trump rightly criticized our immigration policies. And the news media turned it into an attack by Donald Trump against the LGBTQ community. Probably the most amazing thing back from the 2016 campaign were campaign commercials written by Hillary Clinton's campaign team attacking Donald Trump for an appearance he did several years before the 2016 campaign on the David Letterman show. I really would like him to explain uh, why he paid Chinese workers to make uh, Trump ties. This is one of them. It's got his name on it, of course. Um, and instead of deciding to make those ties right here in Colorado um, with a company like Naughty. This was after Donald Trump, as a private citizen, had sent out tweets demanding to see Barack Obama's birth certificate from Hawaii. This made him enemy number one on Hollywood's social media circle. And so David Letterman's job was to ambush Donald Trump with a number of clothing items that he had. And these were made in foreign countries. Let's take a look at David Letterman's planned attack here before Donald Trump even started the 2016 campaign. I have nothing against China. I just hate that their leaders are so much smarter than our leaders. 2016, we will not be the world leader anymore. We I have to tie anywhere in the world. That well, that's that's shirt. You wouldn't wear that we shirt? We also have them in white and beautiful where, white. Where are the shirts made? Bangladesh. What is good? Okay. We employ people in Bangladesh. It's ties? Where are the ties they made? These are too. beautiful ties. They are great ties. The ties are made in where? China? Ties are made in China. And, and you know what, David, in all fairness, I've been very open about that. And not all of them, by the way, but I've been very open about that. Are you okay? Is the, the no, chair I'm was fine. Made in I China. just, yeah, I know. The chair was, chair was made in China. You buy let's that just, at Macy's, by the way. Let's just, let's just, let's just get, uh, the, shut down the Donald Trump factory in Beijing. I would love to. And and we'll put up a Thai factory in the Jamaica, Queens. I love it. And we'll make, we'll make I the Donald it. Trump factory. I'm for it. I'm for it. This was turned into a campaign ad by the Democratic Party. And the problem is Hillary Clinton's team said, we've got a winner here. All of Trump's potential voters are racist bigots who hate Asians, who hate Muslims. And so if we run this ad in every market for the 2016 campaign, we'll illustrate to all of his Hicks supporters that they shouldn't vote for him because he's not as racist as they thought. The problem is, what did this clip show? It showed that Donald Trump was a successful international businessman who could negotiate with Muslim governments and Chinese communist governments. Now, how do I know this? Here it is, Bangladesh. The country has a Bengali Muslim majority. So what we learned from David Letterman's expose is that not only did Donald Trump not hate Muslims, but he was feeding their families with a suit factory in Bangladesh. This is the complete opposite of what the Clinton campaign was telling voters. Hillary Clinton's main claim to foreign policy experience is that she had all the foreign policy experience, negotiations, and dealing with foreign countries, and Donald Trump, as a reality show contestant, did not. Chinese Communist Party. What's Donald Trump being attacked for? Having ties made in Beijing and it showed Americans in the 2016 campaign all across the country that Donald Trump knew how to negotiate with Muslims and with Chinese communists and it was able to produce products in those countries. That requires tremendous negotiating ability to actually produce these garments in these different countries and then to sell them in the American marketplace. And all of the attacks that they made on Donald Trump for not having an American factory in Jamaica, Queens. All of these attacks backfired on the Clinton campaign because Donald Trump simply said, I know all the difficulties of opening a business, of having a factory in the United States of America, and as president, I'm going to fix those obstacles and allow American manufacturing to return. And this is something that resonated with American workers 
all across the country. Jobs of the past are just not going to come back. And when somebody says, like the person you just mentioned, who I'm not going to advertise for, that he's going to bring all these jobs back. Well, how exactly are you going to do that? What are you going to do? There's, there's no answer to it. He just says, well, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to negotiate a better deal. Well, how, what, how exactly are you going to negotiate that? What magic wand do you have? And usually the answer is he doesn't have an answer. And these campaign ads, I think it was run in the last month of the 2016 campaign, they helped push Trump over the top past Hillary Clinton because people like me saw these asinine campaign ads and said, wow, this is an accomplished businessman. He's not just some silly reality show host on NBC. This man knows what he's doing. This brings us around full circle thanks to the ace reporters at the New York Times. They come around and say, Oh, you Trump fans, you racists and bigots in middle America, look at this. Trump's doing business with the Middle East as a private citizen. What a terrible person. Well, problem is, New York Times, you are the racist bigots. You are the Islamophobes. You are the misogynists and everything you claim to oppose. That's you, not us. Someone at the New York Times was assigned the crap job of having to find some negative angle of Donald Trump being an effective businessman with these Middle Eastern governments. Look at this incredible history of year after year of crazy hit pieces on Donald Trump. And we've come full circle. First, Donald Trump was an Islamophobe who hated Arabs and Muslims. Then he was doing too much business with the Arabs, Muslims, and communists in China. Then we're told Trump hates Muslims and Arabs, and then they come around and attack him from the opposite angle again. What does all this mean? What this means is the American news media only exists to perpetuate the power of the wealthy elite. And right now, that's the Democratic Party. When you read a trash rag like the New York Times, are these the people that you would trust to inform you on the issues, and especially on the presidential candidates for 2024? Whatever your political views may be, you just got to look at something like this and laugh. This isn't journalism, and it's not reporting. Thank you. Thank you.